Hey, what's up, fantasy fans? This is Mitchell with FF Real Talk, and uh, we're about to hit week seven, and that's the uh, swing week of the uh, the uh, fantasy season. Um, be into the playoffs start in uh, week fourteen. Um, it's uh, this is that point to where you pretty much know who you are now as a team. You know, if you're three and three or better, um, or if you're you know worse than that, you kind of got a situation or you kind of got a handle on the situation of what you need to be doing going forward, the things you did well in the draft and the things you need to continuously fix in terms of waiver additions. And that pretty much is, you know, is where we're at right now. We don't have a whole lot of leeway and time to be questioning whether you should hold certain people or whether you should drop certain people or whatever have you at this point. Things are clear. You can use the whole week one or week two, week three. Hey, we just getting started this one week uh, excuse early. But once you hit right now, either they're going to do it or they're not going to do it. And I just did a video talking about players that you should be um, comfortable possibly cutting bait with and adding new people, you know, even people from this list I'm about to give right now, if need be, because, you know, there is no more hold on for possible success if you're not showing it, even if you drafted them, no matter where you drafted them. Uh, if they haven't shown anything of promise, they need to go because there are players out there that will do better than these people you're holding on to. And more importantly than that, soon these players that you could possibly add to be better won't be out there. It's going to be more and more the fact that the waiver wire is looking barren and you don't want to get into that position to where, okay, it's week nine and it's week 10 and there's nothing out there and you don't know what to pick up. This is the time to start picking up those last home run hitters that'll be the difference between you getting in the playoffs and winning the playoffs. So we're going to get into it right now. Um, before we get to the list, Two players that you need to grab. Um, these won't be considered in particularly waiver wire additions because they're majority owned. But this is two players that after this week need to be 100% owned. Brandon Oliver, you saw what he did. This is um, two straight weeks, you know, of crazy work. He had 26 101 in a touch, or 26 and 101 rather, and. Uh, and, and a touchdown, and uh, two thirty-three and five. So he's get, making plays in the pass game as well. So the only questions you would have with Oliver is when Brian Matthews comes back. So I, I do know this, that they won't be benching him full out. It's going to be at the very least a uh, pretty even committee at worst. So he might even have the starting job, uh, depending on how he does in week um, in his third start this week. Um, if he does anything like he did last week, Ryan Matthews is going to be having a hard time getting his job back. So at, either way, he needs to be on 100% of leagues. And the same thing goes for Tom Brady. Uh, after two weeks now straight, he's got nearly 650 yards with six touchdowns and no interceptions. He's good to go, y'all. Don't worry about him. I had kind of gotten off the bat. I, in the preseason, I said, Tom Brady, give him. This is Tom Brady. Um, he's going to do what he's going to do. You can feel confident. But after he had that slow start, I was, you know, cutting bait with him. Even said in a couple videos ago, I'd rather have Eli Manning the rest of the season over him. Um, all you got to do is make Brady mad. And then he got embarrassed on national TV. So he's good. You know, you can count on him going forward. So if he's out there and you got any inkling of a quarterback issue, go snatch him up because this will be the last week for it. Okay, on to the uh, the uh, waiver additions video for the week. Uh, well, the pickups rather um, in this video. Number one is Mohamed Sanu. He's 38% uh, owned. Uh, this week he got 10 catches, 120, um, a touchdown on 14 targets. Uh, two straight weeks with a touchdown. And uh, with this A.J. Green thing being fluid, not knowing whether he's going to be in or out of the lineup the next, you know, going forward. Although the thing is with about them, you got to you gotta worry about the bye week. But still, Sanu needs to be on 100%. And even when A.J. Green comes back, um, 
as a wide receiver too, he's going to be just fine. He's carved his niche to be worthy on the team in terms of uh, in terms of the Bengals and on fantasy teams. And to me, he's made himself a draftable commodity from this point forward in future fantasy seasons. I mean. No one really trusted Sanu before this year, but at this point, he's earned our trust. So to me, he should be a guy that should be 100% owned after this week. Number two was a guy I suggested a couple weeks ago, but then he kind of tapered off in a bad game, Jared McKinnon. He went, his ownership never did ascend too high, but now he's back down to 5% on because of that game with Green Bay where it was rained out and he didn't get to show anything. Um, but that's okay. This is now, we now know one thing that's clear. The questions were, where is he going to be in terms of him and Asiata? Uh, right now, it's clear. The decision has been made and McKinnon is going to be the starter. And like I told you a few weeks ago, there's no com- competition in terms of the talent. McKinnon's going to get this thing moving and I believe it's going to be forward and smooth sailing this point forward. It's not going to be an every week thing because he's going to have to adjust to being a starter. But with Teddy Bridgewater also adjusted, um, his role being clear and he being an effective um, measure in the passing game, with last week he had nine targets for, for six catches. I mean, they want to use him everywhere. And he still had not gotten in the end zone yet. So just just – Factor in the fact that a lot of these things are going to change. You know, he's going to get that into the end zone and he's going to become more dependable than he has been these past couple weeks where people have picked him up. So I think he needs to be a lot more on. And Jared McKinnon is an example of one of these running backs that I'd rather have more than those running backs I put in the video that I said that uh, is worth dropping. If you don't know who those are, go back and watch the video. I just did it today. Number three, two players on the same team. Ruben Randall, who's 53% owned, and Odell Beckham Jr., which is um, just at 8% owned. Um, we don't even have to discuss the numbers of last week or what they've done, you know, in Odell Beckham now two games and what Ruben Randall has done um, this entire year because it doesn't matter. Their number one receiver is gone for the year, and there's no telling when he'll be back. They have to step up. And apparently, Odell Beckham's probably going to jump into the slot. And Ruben Randall becomes the number one red zone target for in terms of wide receivers, along with their tight end, um, Larry Donnell. So these guys need to be owned across the board. I don't even understand why Ruben Randall is out there in almost half of leagues, but that's definitely going to change. And with Odell Beckham, being that he's healthy now, it needs to be somebody who's going to be, you know, more. He's going to be used more. And when that happens, it becomes used more in fantasy leagues. Uh, it's going to be an adjustment. You're going to see him trying to get, um, you know, in tune with Eli Manning. But you should see this ascend and you should see it happen quickly because Eli wants to pass. He's got to pass it to somebody. Victor Cruz is not there. So both of those guys need to be on Number four, Justin Forsett. He's at 55% ownership. Uh, hey, guys, I guess hey, I guess I'm on board. I've been telling you for week after week after week that I don't trust Justin Forsett. I don't like him as a runner, and I've seen him year to year be the guy he is. Look, the Ravens like him, and they're using him, and he's getting his opportunities. He's taking full advantage of them. That's all you ask for in fantasy. It doesn't matter what you used to do. It doesn't matter who your name was or your reputation was. If you're able to get a hold of a situation that has gone to the wayside, i.e. Ray Rice, and you're able to become the dominant factor in it, there's a lot to be said for that. And he has done just that. He's out of four of the six games he's played this year, he's had double digit fantasy points. That's beyond all you ask for with a running back, especially one that is in a tier one or tier two. That's beyond what you ask for. So after this week, I think we got it clear who's going to be the number one option in the running game there. Justin Forsett needs to be fully owned. And I think after this week, he probably will be. Number five, Jordan Reed, 50.5% owned. And this was a guy that was pretty much heavily 
almost 100% drafted, but it got dropped over the last few weeks because he hadn't played up until last week. Uh, he's back, y'all. And uh, his talent that made him be a, a heavy uh, favorite in draft day was shown immediately. Eight for 92 on 11 targets. And I've been telling everyone that's been asking me about Niles Paul, should I get him? Should I? I've been saying, look, yeah, but when Reed is in the picture, basically Washington wants to use a tight end, but when Reed's in the picture, you can phase Paul out. Now's that time. As long as Reed is healthy, you can phase Niles Paul out. Jordan Reed is back, and he's going to be getting things going. You can safely drop Niles Paul, and you better add him this week if you got the chance because it's going to be over now. Tight ends are hard to come by. You definitely want to get your hands on Jordan Reed if he's available, available to be grabbed. And now's the time to do it. It's going to help you in the playoffs. Trust. Number six, Andre Holmes. Um, and he's 0.5% owned. The last two games, nine catches for nearly 200 yards and three touchdowns. Um, this guy came out of nowhere. No one was talking about him. I wasn't even thinking about him. Uh, quarterback situation or not um, in terms of, you know, their team is just – you can't argue with that type of production. So it's a lot of players that's out there that we got heavily owned. We got all these players like, say, Keenan Allen, Cordero Patterson, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Raleigh Cooper, that this is one of the guys that would easily be a better selection to hold than that. And like I say, though they're going to have to deal with, with some of the issues in terms of getting used to the young quarterback and everything, but it is what it is. Car is gonna be car is gonna continue to grow, but Andre William Andre, excuse me, Holmes is making things happen regardless. So this is a guy that'll be a nice pickup this week. And keep an eye on it. Make sure you know it becomes official because these things happen. It may not be legit, but at this point. You're looking for home run hitters and looking to replace bad stuff on your lineup. So it looks like he's going to be a positive one to go to. Malcolm Floyd, 4.2% 4 .4, on. Last week he was 5 for 103 with a touchdown. Um, he, I have been talking about him early in the season with waiver ad additions. And it's seeming like he's usurping Keenan Allen's uh, targets in some ways. I mean... He's not exactly consistent week to week, you know, just like, you know, Eddie Royal isn't consistent week to week. But I'd rather have him than Keenan Allen at this point. I mean, Keenan Allen's been a bust so far. So, and he's readily available out there. Keep him on your radar and, you know, don't be hesitant to pull the trigger on getting a guy who's actually producing over someone you want to produce. So, I've been saying it for weeks now that Malcolm Floyd, you can do worse than owning him. Uh, number eight, Ronnie Hillman, 5.3% owned. Last week he went, well, this weekend he went 24 for 100. More than anything is the 24, you know. That's pretty good yards per carry and everything, but more than anything was they gave him 24 carries. That was more carries than they had given Monty Ball all year. That was more yards than Monty Ball had made all year in one game. You know, there was no game that Monty Ball did anything like that. So I've been saying for a while that Monty Ball isn't who we think he is, but, you know, I was thinking that maybe – Everyone has a chance for success in that offense. But, you know, Monty Ball stuck it up. Now's Ronnie Hillman's chance. Don't get too excited because he had a chance last year when Monty Ball wasn't, when they weren't really to commit to him before the fumbling issues. Ronnie Hillman didn't take it and run with it. No, Sean Marino did. So we've seen this story before, but the thing is with Monty Ball, he's hurt. And right now, Hillman has to do it. So be warned about his, you know, capabilities and being in terms of him not always getting it done. But it looks like after that outing, they're going to trust using him with the 24 carries. That's the main thing. So, you know, he you can do worse than adding him as a riser. Several running backs that all y'all own, like the Chris Johnsons of the world or whatever have you, that 
I would much rather have um, Ronnie Hillman take a long shot on a um, on a flyer that might, you know, explode than holding on to Chris Johnson knowing he's not going to do anything. So uh, keep an eye out on, on that or, you know, make a waiver claim for him if you need a running back. Number nine, Brandon LaFell, 2.9% owned. Um, 497 for two touchdowns and six targets. This is another player that I've never liked. This is a player that is not, he's even worse than to say the Eddie Royal, who I've never really trusted. Uh, Brandon Phil, LaFell is almost always proven to not be good. And in Carolina, you know, he was never really effective there, no matter who he was with, whether it was Cam or whatever. Um, but with Tom Brady, it seems like he's going to be dependent on where Tom Brady's going. And I said a little while ago, it looks like Tom Brady's on the full ascend. And if that's the case, looks like he's going to take a few people with him. They have trimmed some of the fat in um, in New England, you know, with getting rid of Kimbrell Tompkins and all of that. So this makes him, to me, the clear number three receiving option. And somebody's got to get it. I mean, they got to, as long as they can spread it around enough, Brandon LaFell has a chance to keep doing this. He has some talent, and I've never said he didn't, but he's just been an underachiever. And maybe in this situation, as it is now, he'll have that chance to, to you know, develop more. You can't ignore players that blow up like that in a Tom Brady offense, so give it a look. And uh, number 10 is uh, Storm Johnson. Not going to do too much touting of him except really one thing. He's 1.1% on, meaning nobody has him. And probably after this week, he won't be anywhere near 30% on. But this is the kicker. He had 10 carries, which isn't anything big. But Toby Gearhart is nothing. He's 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 not gonna he he's not a feature back and he never was and I think they realize that now and they've got to go somewhere and. They're going to bank in giving Storm Johnson a shot to get it done. Maybe the Jaguars running game never becomes anything this year that is going to be worth fantasy usage. But if it's going to be someone, it looks like Storm's going to be the chance, to get the person to get the first chance to get it done. So if you're in need of a running back and you're really struggling with it and you've got some real holes you need to fill with that, you know, he might be a good option for you. But, you know... His, this is going to be a guy that's, again, he's, you know, a Mr. Irrelevant of this list, you know. But, again, he's somebody to keep your eye on because running back is the hardest position to waiver. And I would definitely keep him on a watch list and see what he does the next couple of weeks he plays and then, then take the pounce because, uh, again, he might be a person that can make a huge difference come playoff time. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the ten list right there. Like I said, I did another video today about five running running backs and five receivers that you can consider dropping if you need to be for some of these guys here. Some of the other guys I've said prior weeks if they're available out there, and um, it's just that time where you don't have you don't have the luxury of holding on to names or you don't have the luxury of hoping for production of players who haven't produced across the board. It's 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 time to make moves for yourself. And um, so, yeah, keep um, following on Twitter at FF Real Talk and uh, subscribe to the channel here. Let's get your comments. Any questions you have, you know, let's get more involved, you know. I want to see, you know, more people, you know, if the, if you, if this is on you though, the, you know, if you, if you want to do it, if you're feeling it, let me know that you're enjoying the channel. Let me know that you're enjoying the videos. And again, the best way to respond or for me to respond to you is by following me on Twitter and asking me there. You might have, um, after you see the other video with the five running backs and five receivers to drop, you might have direct questions like, well, I have Chris Johnson. Who should I drop him for? And these players are available in the league. Twitter is the best place to do that. That's where I'm going to see it. That's where I'm going to be able to respond to quickly. So follow me there and uh, spread the word. So until next week, you know, good luck to you. And hopefully your season is uh, looking, you know, plentiful in terms of hopefully you getting into the playoffs. I got a few. I got a 
um, to gain some ground in, but on the grand scale, I'm in the you know top four in most all my leagues. So hopefully y'all guys are in the same position, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right.